nope. she's both broken in some ways yeah. and strong and, mm -hmm. you know, tough and saves the world at the end of the day. <laughs> Okay, now we're here with the uh, screenwriter of Bumblebee, Christina Hudson. How are you? I'm good. Nice to meet you. Well, uh, Bumblebee is my favorite of all the Transformers movies. Good. Of course, because we got girl power, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, now, as a screenwriter, how is it for you seeing your words translated to the big screen? Because it's uh, it's all it's all about the actors and the yeah. direction of it. So there's always that fear, like yeah. you know, it could be a good script, but it could tank. <laughs> On screen, right? With this one, it was a real thrill, honestly. Mm -hmm. I, and also, like, this is a big, big screen. You know, there's a there's a lot of things going on in this movie and a lot of things that, honestly, were just amazing to watch come to life. Travis did such an incredible job, particularly with, with Bumblebee himself and mm -hmm. bringing this non-speaking character to life. Yeah, yeah. And I think that speaks so much to his background in animation and his kind of facility with, with getting emotion out of, of non-speaking, non-human characters. Mm -hmm. um, Haley was a dream come true like to write a character like Charlie and then have an actress as talented as Haley bring her to life is honestly such an honor and a pleasure and a privilege she brought kind of nuance and depth and just her face even when she's not saying the right. words she brings so much to the screen and to the movie um so yeah very grateful for her yeah I mean that's the difficult part about this movie it's like a character that doesn't speak mm. Um, so how do you write that on the page? <laughs> <laughs> it's tricky. It's yeah. tricky. Um, you play with sound a lot, music a lot. That's why a lot of the music in the movie actually kind of was there from day one on the page mm. um, because it had to be, because it had to yeah. be. That's kind of how he communicates. I love the idea that this is the movie where we see how he comes to use the radio as he does in the other movies um, and that it begins more with kind of mood and feeling and mm. emotion because I think we as humans do use music to yeah. express and convey emotion a lot of the time and to... I don't know, process our emotions. So I love the idea that he starts like that and then he starts picking out the words and we really see him kind of learn the language. So you had to do a lot of research to find like the yeah. right song. Because it's 80s. Who doesn't yeah. love the 80s? I love the 80s. <laughs> Me too. Right? So, I mean, you have, I mean, there's tons of songs luckily. Yeah. So. yeah. There's tons of great songs and we had an amazing, you know, music department who also brought loads of new songs to the, mm. to the mix that I hadn't even thought of. But it was, it was a really, really exciting one. Now, were you on the set making adjustments and that kind of sort of thing? You know, I got to be on set a bit and I, I got to go there. My favorite set visit was in Santa Cruz, mm -hmm. watching the boardwalk stuff, just because there were so many extras and they set dressed that that boardwalk and it was am amazing. It was like stepping back in time. Mm -hmm. um, but no, there weren't there weren't that many adjustments that were being made kind of as we were shooting. There were things that we kind of worked on in post. There was wonderful stuff that particularly John Cena brought kind of ad-libbing, mm -hmm. playing with that character. He brought a lot of humor and depth to that character, which was exciting. It's surprising, this muscle guy. Yeah. Not having this talent. To... I know, he's funny. <laughs> he's incredibly likable. Um, and also, it's rare when we sit down with a female screenwriter. Mm -hmm. It's kind of sad. I wish it weren't. It's sad, but yeah. yeah, I mean, when they said, you know, you'll be talking to the screener, I'm like, yeah. finally, <laughs> you don't get that chance very often. So how do you find the industry so far? I mean, you're you're pretty much new to the business, but... Newish. I, I was a development executive for mm. six years before I became a writer. Um, so yeah, I've been working in the industry since 2005. Um, and I've, I've got to know it from all different angles, which I think helps. I think mm -hmm. it knows knowing the other side of the table. Yeah. Um, and so far, it has been very, very good to me. So I'm very grateful. I can't complain. Yeah, I mean, your next project is Batgirl and Birds of Prey. Yeah. Wow, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're in production right now on Birds of Prey. And we'll see what happens with Batgirl. Wow, well, that's exciting. So what else did you find um, making this film as far as, like, because we have a female character? Mm -hmm. You know, it's just so... For me, it was just, like, perfectly... It perfectly captured this young girl who's, you know, who has some struggles, yeah. but she's confident. Yeah. It's, she, it's hard yeah. to manage that. Yeah, you know? she's both broken in some ways yeah. and strong and, mm -hmm. you know, tough and saves the world at the end of the day. <laughs> uh, and that's kind of the kind of character that I like writing. I mm -hmm. like writing, you know, strong female characters who are also flawed and complex and have, you know, lots of different sides to them. She is a tomboy, but that doesn't kind of counteract yeah. the fact that she's also feminine and a girl and embraces that. Mm. Um, and I, I loved writing it. Honestly, Charlie was, was such a fun character to write. Yeah, I mean, it's nice, like, it's nice to see because women sometimes are just black and white. Yeah. You yeah. Know? They're pigeonholed into like one specific right. category when actually like that's not what real life is. None <laughs> of us are like that. <laughs> <laughs>